Hey y'all, before we get started today, I want to remind you that in my real life, I'm helping people keep more of their own money at savewithconrad.com. I would love to see if I can help your family save some cash. We're routinely helping our podcast listeners save thousands of dollars each and every year, all because they spent just a few minutes with us over at savewithconrad.com. I'm talking to you. If you're in a 30 year loan, I'm talking to you. If you've got credit card debt, I'm talking to you. If you've got a second mortgage, we can take care of all that. Just like that. We're going to get you a better interest rate. We're going to shorten your term and we're going to help you pay off all your credit card debt once and for all and do it all with cheaper monthly payments. That's right. You can get out of debt faster with cheaper monthly payments and you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do it. Find out how much money you can save right now for free at savewithconrad.com. And here's the thing, man, there's a chance that you've got a great deal. Maybe we couldn't save you any money, but wouldn't it be nice to just have that peace of mind of knowing you've got the best deal for your family. That's what my family can do. By the way, go check out some of our reviews at conradreviews.com. We've got an A plus rating with the BBB over a thousand five-star reviews and an average score of 4.72 stars. We're helping families just like yours get out of debt faster and with cheaper monthly payments at savewithconrad.com. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Oh, and did I mention no house payments for two months? Give me a call 888-425-0105 or send me an email personally, conrad at savewithconrad.com. And let's get you saving some money right now at savewithconrad.com. Hello, Terry. 16 times I got a woo. Woo 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 woo. That's 17. That's 16. That was 17. You've been doing that a lot of times, I know, with a lot of people, because you knew right away that was 17. I was tricking you. <laughs> Just like the time you tricked me, put me through the table in Nashville. <laughs> Here, follow me, Ricky. Follow me. <laughs> okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that, <laughs> we, st- we found it hardcore before there was hardcore. <laughs> well, isn't that the darn truth? Mm. Um, I have a chest, you know, every morning that I get up and look in the mirror, you know, and I look in the mirror and I know that that's the person I I cannot trust nor ever understand, you know, and I look at his chest and he's got all of these dark blue marks on it. <laughs> and I know what the hell they're from, too. I go ahead and I think about you every morning, hey, Rick Blair. <laughs> you, you, hey, you had the best chest to chop in the business, man. <laughs> 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 and now, between me and you're, between me you're and Wahoo, we've got chest. a lot in. You're knocking my chest and making fun of my chest. No, I'm saying you you always stayed wide open. And between me and Wahoo, man, it was fair game. Oh shit, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't it? It really was, you know. And you know what? You know, just you mentioned Wahoo. Gosh, what a you know what a bunch of tremendous guys that just that aren't talked about enough. I know. You know, I mean, Why you know, we're, we're, in the Hall we're of very fame. fortunate, Rick. You and I are very fortunate. But like Wahoo and all of those guys from that era, what about them? You know, and then know. all of the guys from my father's era that are that are lost somewhere. They're they're you know their names are out there. Uh, what they did is out there. You know, a lot of good guys, a lot yeah, of I mean, great I, guys that I, are gone. Yeah, and I don't mean this with any malice, but. How does Larry Zabisco go to the Hall of Fame before Wahoo McDaniel? Wow. You know what I mean? Well, that's a, that's an awful good question. No, I know it is. I mean, anybody that knows that is, the history that's, of that's Wahoo McDaniel, question. aside from pro football, he's one of the greatest wrestlers that ever lived. Do you think that was a Bruno deal? Do you think he's in because Bruno maybe campaigned for him or pushed for no, him? No, I have, I have no idea. I'm just talking about in terms of legendary status. Sure. Well, we, we can, you know, and, 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 we, and we all can go on with other names, too. I just, you know, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, that, yeah, that Dick, shouldn't Dick, be Dick there. Murdoch. You know, well, well, you know Dick Murdoch, and, and but Dick Murdoch and Wahoo McDaniel's, you know, Ray yeah. Stevens, and uh, Ray Stevens. Know, as, as you want a guy, you want to talk about a guy that is lost in the shuffle of uh, of the New Deal, you know, which is WWE. Yeah, look at Dick Slater. Oh my God! You know, I I reached out to Dick last uh, Friday. He won't even he won't anybody come see him. 
That's that's a shame. You did? Do you not? Did you not know and that? And what a great guy! And what a great guy! He's a great guy. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, when, when I was, he's a great guy. He just he's in a and, nursing but home. I can't, you know, but I can't. You know, whenever whenever you don't, you know, whenever things have been tough and the business has been tough on you, it's hard to love it. Oh, I know. I you mean, know, I, and, you and know. it's so easy, Rick. It's so easy to hate. Yeah, you're right. Well, you, you know. know I know that Dick Slater, you know, the way I loved Dusty and wanted to be Dusty, Dick Slater spent his whole life wanting to be Terry Funk. And you should be proud of it. Well, Dick, I'll tell you what. Dick Slater I was a hell of a worker. I am very proud of him because he, he might have surpassed Terry Funk. The guy was a great worker in the ring. Well, he didn't surpass he you. I, I won't go that far, but he loved oh, you. Well, and, he and, was a great worker inside the ring. And, uh, and double tough on the outside. Got caught up in a shuffle. And the shuffle was, uh, it was a shuffle with a crooked deck. Yeah, I know. And, you but, know, you know, and I, that, but I, that doesn't mean bad, though. I mean, no, if, I, if I had the crooked deck to play, I would play it, Rick. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying, but, you know, it's like yeah. I tell people all the time about how tough Slater was. And then you might tell the story better than me. You guys are in that van with Blanchard. And you had that car wreck, and, you know, Dick was never the same after they had that concussion or whatever it was, remember? Terrible, terrible car wreck. It was a uh, Coke truck. It was turned over in the road in front of us. Turned you, right over, and we were on a four-lane uh, four highway, and it was our section of the road there. It was just a one-way situation. There was a 18-wheeler Coca-Cola truck turned up with its... Uh, undercarriage to us, which there was no reflectors, no nothing, coming down the road 65, 70 miles an hour, and, or probably 95, who in the hell knows, but anyhow, as we hit that son of a gun, and uh, it did some damage to all of us for a long period of time, and, and Dick, unfortunately, is, I truly believe that he's still damaged from that. Yeah, well, you know? he, he, they told me he weighs 320 pounds. I, I I just can't see him. Yeah, he's he's in a full time nursing home uh, over in uh, Clearwater, and uh, they he, he wouldn't take my phone call or anything. I tried calling him last Friday, so I figured if he talked so to anybody, it would be he, you. But he's a, he's a, he's in a nursing home where? In Clearwater. In Clearwater. Yeah, and I figured if he's not talking to you, he's not talking to anybody. So I mean. Well, that is just a shame. Yeah, that he, he can't shame. walk. He's in a wheelchair. He's like, Mother, you know, there looks like there should be some way that he could at least get some something from from back from our profession. Well, I I, I couldn't be more agreeable. I, I tell you, who else is in really bad shape right now, Terry? I'd hate to spend ten minutes of our show talking about health issues, but. Jack Mulligan oh, it needs to be talked about. Yeah, it really does. No, J- you know? Jack, Jack Mulligan had a heart attack on Friday, and Jack weighs four hundred and seven pounds. That just that, that just yeah. both of those stories are mm-hmm. are just. It's like I don't want to accept them, you know. Yeah. And I mean, I know that they're true, you know, but I just don't want to accept them. I didn't want to accept uh, Dusty not being here, you yeah. know, and. Uh, and on and on and on, Rick. And you know where the same thing is. You know, it's it's just not. Uh, I I just don't like it. You know, and uh, you know, it's all of my friends disappearing. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, the last time I saw you, I, well, I've seen you since, but in Philadelphia, you were telling me the story. You had like 16 inches of your intestines taken out. I didn't even know about it. We had, wow. we just got to stay closer in touch because I didn't even know about that. Do you remember, Terry? Yeah, I, I've had so damn many. I, I am the multi-million dollar man. I'm proud of it, too. <laughs> I've had heart stents put in. I've had 18 inches of gut put in me, plastic in my guts. I've had two knee replacements. I've had an elbow replaced. I've had all of this shit done to me, and I am I am thrilled that I can call myself one of the most operated men on in the world yeah. of professional wrestling. See, I didn't know you had the, I didn't know you had the heart stints. Jesus, holy Christ! It's, oh yeah, I didn't yeah, know I, that. Well, hell, I had that son of a bitch back right after I wrestled you and lost the championship. 
What? What? what <laughs> I, I never wrestled you for the title. <laughs> oh hell, it was a Georgia championship. Oh Georgia championship. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm just bullshitting. That's you all. got me confused. You got me confused with Tommy Rich. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hell, you both. You both had the same hair bottle there. I know. You know who died. Uh, you know who died well, yesterday, guy, right? He was. I loved him. Yeah, he was Tommy a great Rich, kid. where is he? What's he doing? Tommy Rich has no teeth. He has no teeth. That. He's still around now. No, I know. Literally, he he has no teeth, and he's around. He yeah, and no he, but he, he's just he's not in good health. Rick well, Morton, why Rick, don't he get some uh, some teeth? Rick Ricky Morton told me that he's in such a bad place. He his teeth got rotten. I mean, wow. it's, it's, it's that sad a deal. And then yesterday, Buddy Landell died. Well, hell, have you got any goddamn good news? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I know you're out on a ranch. You don't hear what's going on. Yeah, yeah. well, you don't have to hit, hit me with seven guys passing away. Then I just went to my football reunion. Uh, oh, Mercury Morris was there yesterday. Oh, yeah, how's he doing? Looks like a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, all green and wrinkled. Yeah, he could play, boy. <laughs> no, Holy cow. No, 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 he's not. He looks wonderful, and he's doing great. And uh, Merck was there, and a bunch of the other guys was there. And, uh, uh, you know, we tried to get a hold of Bobby Duncan. He wouldn't come. Is Bobby, you know. li is Bobby living? I didn't know that. He's doing okay? Uh, yeah, he just won't He won't, just won't come to any... Any functions or anything, yeah. you know. And uh, how about your buddy that played John Ayers that played for the 49ers? John Ayers passed away from the 49ers. Uh, whenever he was 40, what was he? Vicky, 40, 42. Oh my God! 42 years old. I didn't know that. From yeah. what? Yeah, he had uh, he had cancer of the what, Vicky? Jeez. He had glandular carcinoma. Wow. Uh, Right above your liver, yeah. glandular carcinoma. But and that was. Jesus, uh, I did not know that because I met John. Every time we wrestled somewhere, the, he loved you. He loved you, Rick. He no, loved he, to go watch. He you. was fun to be with. We had a ball. Oh, and he loved to be in. You know, he loved to be in, around the guys. Yeah. He just loved the boys. Hey, the the Deviasi plays. He's younger than you, right? Yeah, I was, uh, he was, uh, whenever I just was turning, you know, Teddy came along. He was the same age as John Ayers. Okay. So is what he was. But Ted, Ted played at West Texas too, right? Yes, he did. Yep. Ted played at West Texas. Uh, Manny Fernandez played at West Texas. Oh, did he Tully really? Tully Blanchard played at West Texas. I knew Tully did, yeah. 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 Manny was uh, was nuts. Yeah, yeah. He was out of his ever loving mind. I loved him though. You know when he, uh, I'll never forget. He was up at the bar one time. You know, and uh, he went ahead and had a fight with this guy and uh, beat him up. And then uh, he went ahead and he drove his car over his legs. Oh, and then he, uh, after he did that, he drove him over. And I guess he didn't think that was bad enough, so he put it in reverse and drove over him again. Oh man, I didn't, I didn't wow. hear that story. Jeez. Yeah, man, it wasn't Manny's legs. It was a guy that was in. <laughs> that no, that's fight. what I'm saying. I didn't hear that story. Oh yeah, that was that was one from college here, college days. That's a college day story on Manny. Yeah, Jesus. So, so we can, yeah. So yeah. Terry, talking about West it's Texas State. It's always good to tell a new story on a guy. Yeah, I didn't know that. Especially of one of that's so interesting as that. Yeah, is he still is he still living? I haven't heard Manny's name in a long time. <laughs> yeah, he's still living. Uh, he's got a bad liver. He's out there. I talked to him the other day, and he's he's uh, uh, got a school out there. He does an excellent job. Where's that at? He's got Fresno. Oh, out in California. Okay. Yeah, that's where Manny is. Yeah. You know, okay. I kind of keep up with that boy and uh, and love him. Yeah. You know. That's strange. I did not yeah. know that about Manny. I saw him over the years, and every that time... he ran over that guy's legs twice? Jesus. He's lucky he didn't <laughs> go to jail. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus, times have... You, could, you couldn't do that now. 
<laughs> no, you couldn't do that now. You know, Jesus, you couldn't run over. You couldn't run over somebody's suitcase and not get you. <laughs> And you couldn't walk around my backyard of my house with a butcher knife in your mouth trying to kill my dog either. Yeah, you couldn't. Yeah, you couldn't go ahead and turn a pit bull <laughs> loose on an individual either. <laughs> okay, that, so we didn't hear that was, story. Well, that was very aggressive and ready to go. <laughs> and then whenever your friend is over there in front of the dog. Barking and growling, you let the pit bull go. <laughs> no, you said I'm not afraid of him. I said, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, a bull. Yeah, I said I was not afraid of him, but you're supposed to hold him, and you let him go, and he latched onto my nose. <laughs> You bit a hole right through Terry's nose. Oh yeah, right God. through my nose. Ter Ter listen to him laugh. Ter Terry ran listen, in the house. Listen. Okay. Yeah, listen to that flare laugh now. He continues to laugh. <laughs> he thinks that's funny. Yeah, to this day, he is very proud of what he did. I know. He tells everybody <laughs> about it. Then he, then I have to reinforce it and tell it on the damn radio. No. That's, the that's too much, Rick. That's too much. The, be the best part was... <laughs> My wife, the babysitter, came. I said, just go stay in the room with Megan. And you were out in the backyard naked with your, the butcher knife in your mouth trying to catch my dog. I yeah, had what passed was out. Than that was, was you sleeping in the bathtub. I hunted all over you know, for know, you the I next know. morning. Uh -oh. And I couldn't find him. I thought, Rick, Rick. Uh -oh. I thought, uh-oh. She, she did him in this time. She yeah, was God. over with. Well, my wife took. House. My wife Finally, took. I heard somebody snoring in the bathroom. <laughs> so, well, he went to sleep on the toilet, and he wasn't on the toilet. He was in the bathtub with all of his clothes on. Yeah, yeah well. Well, you didn't have your clothes on. My wife said, please meet the world champion. I did. <laughs> to all, <her laughs> to all, to all the neighborhood did. girls. <laughs> welcome, to the, welcome to the wild, wild west. <laughs> yeah, that, I had my, I had my, I had my, I had my one shooter with me instead of my yeah. six shooter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terry, they remember the thing about it, the strangest thing was because Terry had to be somewhere on a right. plane the next day, right? Leslie yeah, took all I my sure shit. Did. She took all my shit, threw it in the yard. And Terry and I just pick it up and threw it in the back of my Eldorado, and I don't even remember driving down to that downtowner. I mean, how we're not in prison and didn't kill somebody. I don't know. We're dead. Yeah, we know. were drinking Everclear on the way home, right? Everclear. Oh, my gosh. With that, yes. with the yes. Foster, with that Foster's beer, you were lighting Valentine's hair you on know, fire. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, we weren't, we weren't really doing anything wrong. We were just headed home. <laughs> yeah, That's you, all. We were just headed home. You, we were we were not guilty of anything. You kept lighting Jimmy. Cro Remember Jimmy Crockett wanted to ride with you because you were the world champion. And oh, you I love that. And you kept you kept pouring beer on <laughs> Crockett's crotch all the way home in Valentine's <laughs> new car. <laughs> Crockett, Crockett was nuttier than anybody. Oh, though. I know. Oh, God. I can't tell those stories. I mean, I'd yeah, love to. We, <laughs> well, well no. we love him, though, don't we? Uh, you know, yeah, I, oh, really yeah, I, I love the guy. I love the guy. I did. I thought the guy was, yeah. you know, he was. I oh, he, he wanted was, to be one of the boys so bad. Oh, He was, I'll tell you what. He, <laughs> he made it. He made it. <laughs> He didn't. He didn't miss one party in Greensboro. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. He made it. There was some wild ones. <laughs> God, oh, good lord! I tell you, the, uh, going back to Dick Slater, one of the best of all time. I don't he know if you, remember, if you remember. He this. was. God bless him. Yeah, it's, it's me. I, I was the champion, and we were all in Japan together. Dick, me, Piper. Can imagine what a tour that was. Oh right? my gosh! Yeah, so I'm this, glad would be, this I would be. There. I wasn't in on this. No, this would be. This was the one where you guys Ixnade Piper because he was jumping on the roof of the, of the taxi cab. Remember, the one and only <laughs> Dory said, "I don't think you're going back." <laughs> so, <laughs> so I gave it to flight attendant five hundred bucks because they paid us in cash back then to put Piper and and Slater up in first class, right? And we're going to Rita, Chicago, and then I had to wrestle Harley the next night in St. Louis. And um, so, he, of course, I had my robe on and all the usual bullshit, you know, and Piper had his kilt on. And anyway, 
the four flight attendants, one lived in Fort Myers, two lived in Chicago, and one lived in Milwaukee. They went right to St. Louis with it. They didn't even go home. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, you yeah. know, I want to tell you. I want to tell you about one. That's, I went on one over there. You know, we took a flight over. Yeah. Uh, it, it might have been coming back. I can't remember which, but we took a flight over to Japan, and uh, we proceeded to get very, 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 very. You know, but before we got drunk, is uh, I was uh, I, I went ahead and said to one of the stewardesses, I said, "I'll give you two hundred dollars if you'll move all of the wrestlers up to first class." <laughs> and she did. What a mistake that was! Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, she moved them all. There was nobody in first class. We just took over. We just it was, we were idiots by the time we got over there. Oh well, you know, it was uh, it was nuts. And it, 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 was, it nuts. was considered as a, and, I, and what, once again, we're not very far in difference in age, but you guys started a little bit ahead of me. But you were considered royalty, right? If you got the drink with Terry Funk and Harley Race, I mean, that's just what it was. And Dusty <laughs> and Dust, Dusty would tell you the same thing. The two most yeah. legendary champions in our business for going out and having fun and enjoying life. Right. Well, I had a good time, too. I better put myself in that category. Um, Absolutely but, put yeah, yourself but we had, in it. And, you know, yeah. and that's just one of the... They were, uh, you know, I mean, it was just great times. Great yeah, times. They were. I mean, you got Terry, when you had Funks, and I mean, I got to go to Japan with these guys a lot. But when you're the Funks were there, Terry, Dory... Harley Race. I mean, Dusty didn't go that much, but I was with those guys. I mean, you talk about a good time. Yeah. You worked your ass off because you know how hard it was, Terry, wrestling the Japanese because it was like like a, like you were shooting every night, right? Um, yeah. With Saruta, uh, Tenru was okay, but Saruta never got a hold of the business. Uh, and then Choshu and those guys, all those, all those Olympic guys. <laughs> So we'd yeah. wrestle an hour every night, but man, we would go out to Korean barbecue and drink beer all night and have a hell of a time and get up and start it again, man. And, I, and you, know, you know what was great about it? Now, well, you say what you want to about it, but I know, I know you too. Is whenever you went out there and you went into that ring, you had to, you know, I mean, it, there was a certain awe about it because we would have to go ahead and 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 and. Be sure of ourselves and protect ourselves too. Oh, I know. That's what I'm saying it was. It, it was. We we had fun, but the job was of serious. Especially if you were the champion. I mean, that, that back then, you know, we get off the plane. You remember there'd be 500 people from the press there to meet you, right? And you'd go right Absolutely. to the hotel and do a press conference, and it was a big deal. I mean, it was you know. Yeah. And that, and you. And, it I mean, was it was a wonderful era in our business, you know. Yeah. And and uh, your era as champion and my era as champion was all also wonderful eras in the business. Uh, we had a, a a there was and not trying to be funny or anything, but uh, wrestling is as as. as has changed, and we will all agree to that. It's entertainment, and it's recognized as entertainment. But uh, we were looked at a bit differently, I think, at the time. And that's that's not saying anything against the guys today, because a bunch of tough guys, just tough as we always were. But the business is looked at differently. It's entertainment. Yeah, it you is, know? and and Terry, the thing we're like... There's th nothing wrong with that either. No, 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 there's not. But the thing that makes it the big difference f for me with the kids, even since I retired in 08 with WWE, is this scrutinization of social media. Guys like you and me and Dusty and Harley, your brother wasn't that wild, but I mean, there's a bunch of us that could have never existed in this time frame because... You're not allowed to have the fun you had. I mean, we would work just as hard. But, I mean, you know, the like Cena can't even go out to a bar anymore. He's not allowed to. You know, seven years ago, yeah. John would go out and have a beer every night. But Vince, you know, put the reins in. Because of social media, people taking pictures. Right. And, you know, it's it's brutal. And guys like us, I don't know if we could have made it back then. you had the guys, you know, I'm not trying to be funny. But then you had the guys... That uh, I don't care if it would have been Jim Barnett or or uh, who or, or or Vince McMahon Sr. or who try to go to tell me not to go out to a bar is I would have uh, 
Oh, I don't think I think that would have been a bad move on on, on, on them with you and I both. You know, uh, I, well, I, I don't certainly. mean that. Not not like I am. I have a hard time I, I keeping my. a bit different. I have a hard time keeping my clothes on an airplane now. <laughs> 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 Certainly not in the 80s. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, riding from riding from Raleigh and Greensboro to Charlotte with you. Uh, go ahead. Tell me, I tell this story all the time, too, because I used to, he used to say to me, I would bug, bug him so much. I'd, I'd say, Terry, when do you think I'll be champion? I don't know. <laughs> He said, in one day... Oh, got, my God, that was that was constant. I know. One day you got in the car constant and you said... from the time that you and, uh, <laughs> you, and, uh, you and Dick Murdoch drove up to my house. Yeah, I know. The first time I ever met you, you <laughs> wanted to know when you was going to be champion. <laughs> you weren't even in the business. Uh, you got in my car one time and you said, if you ask me that question one more fucking time, I'm not going to talk to you all the way. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of are we there right. yet? We're not going to be true. Right. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. He said, it'll, its best line was, it'll come. It'll come in time. <laughs> <laughs> and it did, didn't it? It and did. It did. Oh, and it man. Did, you know, and, and it worked out for everybody. It worked out for me. It worked out oh. for Harley. It worked yeah. out for you guys. It worked out for... Oh God! You, you know, know I, it worked out for the Briscoes. It yeah. worked out for. It was a wonderful thing, and uh, and we in turn uh, certainly busted our ass for the guys. Uh, uh, we knew what we were there for, and we were there to uh, try to make them have a little bit better money every week. Yep. You know, and uh, make a little bit better money and make things better after we left and. We live by that code, you know, and uh, and that's that's what was good. Yeah, no, it was great. And I just got to say something, Terry. Well, I, I I have so much that we could talk about, but I got to think about I think about this all the time because the one thing I learned from you. I mean, I learned a lot about real working, you know, which was the fundamental stuff. But what I learned later on in life was I learned the entertainment aspect from you. You know what I mean? And I always say about myself, as my skills decline, my entertainment factor got bigger. <laughs> and it's like you, long before I started doing it, you were taking swings at, at, at ghosts. And I mean, you were just swinging in the air at anything. And like, it was like it was a person standing in front of you and, 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 then, and then you'd fall down. I took that to a new level, buddy. <laughs> I just yeah, walked across did. the forum. I just walked across the ring and fell on my face. <laughs> but you, when you, you started jabbing things like that, I mean, everybody thought that, that I invented that. Terry Funk used to come out of the corner like he was jabbing someone that wasn't even there. <laughs> I mean, to this day, I laugh about it. Oh. It was, it was, it was great. It was great. Yeah. It was a great. You know, we were the greatest entertainers, and we never said we were. No, no. Not one of us. <laughs> I know. Is that, then, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Is to, you know, I mean, it's just so wonderful to be wonderful entertainers and uh, be mad if somebody said you were an entertainer. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, the difference what, between what you What a and, great feeling. It, it is. But the difference between you and me is... You were fearless, and I can never call myself fearless. When I turned on that TV one time and you jumped off the balcony on top of a table, on top of Mick Foley at ECW, I almost died. I said, what, did, what is he doing? <laughs> then you light yourself on fire in Japan, rolling around in barbed wire. You know what I was trying to do? <laughs> what? I was trying to make a damn buck. You got more money, money than God. You sold that ranch for ten million dollars, and still be my own boss. You sold that <laughs> ranch for ten million dollars. I got the details. And you got the details. I, <laughs> yeah, I didn't sell it for ten, but I made made a little bit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. I, made yeah, I don't think bit. you and Vicky have to worry about going to the grocery store today or anything. You'll be all right. Jesus. Oh, Christ. I think we'll be okay. Man, oh man, do I love talking about Henson shaving. I absolutely love this razor. It's the best shave of my life. And it's also cheaper than what I've been doing. I had a shave earlier today. My barber actually uses a Henson razor now. 
I showed her and she could not believe the difference. Seriously, this is the best razor we've ever used. That's why you got to meet Henson Shaving. Hanson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that's made parts for both the International Space Station and the Mars rover, and now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. You see, razor blades are like diving boards. The longer the board, the more the wobble. The more the wobble, the more likely you are to get nicks, cuts, and scrapes. You see, a bad shave isn't a bad blade problem. It's an extension problem. By using aerospace grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of a human hair. And that means a secure and stable blade with a vibration free shave. And it gets better. The razor also has built in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, no planned obsolescence. The Henson razor works with a standard dual edge razor blade to give you that old school nature boy shave with the benefits of new school tech. And once you own a Henson razor, check this out. It's only three to $5 a year to replace the blades. I have to admit, I was blown away by this. I have hammered it enough around the office. My dad finally said, okay, I give, I'll, I'll check it out. So I went and I actually saw how affordable the razor is because I was lucky. They sent me a free one to vet. I fell in love and I ordered one for the office. I ordered one for my shave kit. Even my barber got one. And yes, dad has one too. You're going to love it because seriously, three to $5 a year for blades. Think about how much you've spent on blades in your lifetime, three to five bucks a year. Bam. Not only is it better, it's also cheaper. And that's why it's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that will last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash flare to pick the razor for you. Be sure to use the code flare and you'll get two years worth of blades for free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades. When you head to H E N S O N S H A V I N G dot com slash flare and use the promo code flare. And I, I doubt another you know, compliment, I've got, man. I've got, you know what I've got? I've got this business to be totally thankful for. Exactly. That's what did it. But let me say That's something else. It. I don't know how in the hell, and I'm saying this as a compliment to Victoria, how in the hell you were lucky enough to stay married all these damn years and me, brother? I, I'm 0 4. What the hell? I was, I, I was a straight lace guy. Oh, I know that. <laughs> yeah, I know that. I, I, I just didn't hear the rumors right. You know, I, I, I knew you were. <laughs> you knew I was. I knew it, but I mean, I just thought. Yeah, he knew it. That's right. Yeah. Well, you That's did. all that counted there. Yeah, and when you keep Vicky, you keep Vicky in a ranch with no communication, no telephone lines or anything, <laughs> only telegraph. She's not going to hear the stories. <laughs> right, keep her on that horse. Yeah, yeah. Keep her on that. He had horse. a guy. He had a goddamn choo choo at a, at a caboose in his backyard. <laughs> yeah. I slept I in it one I spent a lot night. of nights in that caboose. <laughs> yeah, I did too. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> oh That's God! Right. He goes to me one time. He goes, "Hey, you like sushi, right, Flair?" I said, "Yeah," but I said they have sushi here in Amarillo. So he said, "Yeah, we we'll go have lunch." We went. I ate this sushi in Amarillo, and I got so damn sick. It had more MSG in it than anything. <laughs> and I had to wrestle him that night in Hereford in the stockyard or some damn thing. Remember, I was dying. Yeah, I couldn't breathe. Texas, that's right, yeah. Japanese yeah, food in Amarillo. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> then you named that bar the Four Horsemen. What the hell? <laughs> the Four Horsemen. <laughs> what is, that was the name of the bar Speaking in Amarillo. Speaking of the Four really? Horsemen. The Four Horsemen Lounge. Oh, that was, how appropriate was that? That's awesome. Yeah, Terry was running these shows at the Civic Center, man. We all flew out there and got hammered. I mean, worked the show and went back to the Four Horsemen Hotel. It was phenomenal. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was phenomenal. Oh, okay. was, had a great time. Oh, God. You know, we need, you know, it's just, what a great life we had, Rick. It was terrific. Oh, God. If, if people only knew. You know what I mean? We made money, but you know what? I don't even think we thought about it back then. If we just, it was so often. I mean, I know for myself, which I sometimes have to think about what I'm saying, but... I couldn't wait to go to work. When I was home, it's like one time, this is a great Terry Funk story. So I get off the plane, I meet Terry at a hotel in Japan. And he goes, did you hear about Piper? And I said, what? And he said, well, I got Piper, got that damn six-carat diamond ring, man. You haven't seen it yet? 
And I go, no. I said, Piper got a six carat diamond ring. He said, yeah, man, he's killing it in New York. I said, shit, well, good for him. So I'm all the way along. So you know, he's got me hooked now. Yeah. So I said, where'd you see Piper in that six or that big diamond ring? <laughs> he said, I, I said, you say, well, easy you get it. He said, Flair, learn, remember this. Everybody likes to hear that someone's doing good, but not too good. And you just fell into the trap. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? That's right. Exactly right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean, I couldn't hear get over six good, diamond but not, right, that right, right. Dad, not that goddamn. Not that Good. Yeah, I go, you, go, you want to hear they're doing not good, but not that good. good. <laughs> not that good, no. No. I don't want to hear of any of my friends doing that good. Yeah, you got me good on that one, man. I know it. That was, I worse. Know it. <laughs> that was worse than when am I going to be champion. <laughs> hey, where in the hell are you headed next? Where am I headed next? I'm headed to uh, Indianapolis this weekend for a Comic-Con. Are you? Yeah, and then I'm coming oh, uh, out your way, uh... Coming, to, I, I'm like not, not your way. I'm going to San Antonio next month for a, a Comic Con there too. Yeah, so I do a lot of those now. Are they, are they are they fun to do? They are, you know, and believe it or not, and they're pretty profitable too. You know, you, you got to have the right agent, uh, as you know, as, yeah. as everything in this business. And uh, um, I take Wendy with me, who you met in Philadelphia. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, nice. And, and yeah, she's wonderful. And Wendy. Uh, nice. She, she has a counter and she counts the beans. So <laughs> when it comes, well, that's the best way to do it with you, or else the beans aren't going to the beans oh, are going to be lost. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. You know, I've always liked respect. You thought I was a smart guy. Well, just because I didn't go to college <laughs> doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. I was enrolled for two years. I just didn't go to class. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? What about me? As I went, I went. I went. You graduated. I went four and a half years. Yeah, but your dad would have kicked your ass years. if he didn't graduate. Never graduated. You didn't like graduate? 10 hours. Seriously, as I'm going to tell you something, is I like 10 hours to graduate. Well, they had to just give you a back. doctorate for being I never who went you are. Back and, well, I never went back and got it. Never went back and did it. Well, I'm surprised you they know. don't give you some of a doctorate. Dr. Terry Funk from West Texas State. That'd be awesome. Well, well, I'm going to call go the school recommended. I, I definitely, I, I definitely think that you should. <laughs> that would be, I'm sure that would go a long way. Uh, hello, this, is, this, Rick this is the Nature here. Boy from Woo Nation, <laughs> <Yeah>. Terry Funk. <laughs> can we please make Woo him a Nation. doctor? <laughs> I love the Wu Nation. I love the Wu Nation. The Wu Nation's gonna love you. you. They won't believe than this. The Wu Nation. <laughs> that sounds like you know. It sounds like it's uh, right off the Apache Reservation. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it is too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think that'd be the Wu 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 Reservation. Yeah. 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 My gosh, you know it's. Uh, you could have had a few years back. You could have had some good wooers in there with you if you yeah, took, if God. You took, if you put the Indians at your side, Wahoo, the Briscoes. My yeah. gosh, you know it, yeah. it, it's so amazing. I mean, the last time that we we had a great time, but when they inducted you guys in Houston, you know, it's like I go to Toronto. You need to have the funks here every year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I would like, you know, it's... it's I don't uh, get it. I don't get who, what the selection process is to who gets to come to WrestleMania. For sure, they're going to bring you to Dallas this year. Jesus. Yeah, they, know what they, they won't they, bring me. You know, what, you know what the problem with them is? They know that you hide from me and won't drink it anymore. <laughs> that, that's, that's not right. And they're right. always threatening to check me in, so I don't. I guess I figured I'm I came up there. I trouble. came up here, I think it was two years ago. I can't remember where it was, but I went to that one and I was such a good boy. And hoping they would bring me back again. You know. Well, well, well the last I, time I, I, I minded my P's and Q's, I did everything right. Well, and then you know, they the, didn't invite me back. Well, I'm going to strongly recommend that they bring you to, to uh, Dallas. I'll call Corona when we get off the phone today, <laughs> when we get off the hook here. All right. you got to have right. Terry Funk in Dallas, man. Yeah, and, I want to go. I want to go. Dam- go to Dallas. And they better damn well in, 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 induct Michael Hayes in the Hall of Fame. That's another bad one. How could Michael Hayes and the Freebirds not be in the Hall of Fame? Jesus. I have no idea. I mean, think about I have it. no idea how they could not put Michael Hayes in all of them. Yeah, or, or the Freebirds. I mean, they got to go this year. Oh, no, but it should have been oh, a long time ago. 
They should. Are they going to put them in this year? I have no idea, but I I hope so. You know, Jesus. Evidently, they would. I mean, yeah. why wouldn't they? You know. I have no idea. I I don't know. The I'll bet process. they will. I'll bet they will. I'll bet they'll put them in. I'll bet they'll put them in. So, yeah. Terry, over the years, yeah. you've worked for the McMahons a few times, and uh, seemingly there's a, a long-running joke about the way you leave or what you say you're going to do when you leave the McMahon territory. Can you share with the listeners to Woo Nation kind of what that note looks like or what the message was? Well, I, I went ahead and I, let's see, I, I think, did I make, a, I wrote a note that I said, uh, my horse is sick, I think he's dying. <laughs> and that's what I uh, went ahead and used as a. <laughs> and sure enough, my horse was sick, and and he was a good horse too. <laughs> and uh, my horse, my horse, he, he lasted till I got home. <laughs> <laughs> and now, but anyhow, as Vince, every every time he sees me anymore, because I said that whenever I left. Immediately, you know, because I love my horse so much, I had to leave immediately, you know. <laughs> and now for the last the last 15 years or 20 years or whatever it's been, Vince always says to me, he says, first thing he says to me is, how's your horse? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> that is. That's a true story. Though. My horse is sick. I think he's dying. Oh, God. That's the excuse I use. That was a handwritten <laughs> note. Yeah. Well, that place, I mean, the, one thing about that place, when you when you get in there, they work you hard. <laughs> Sometimes you got to think and, of a reason to get a day off. Oh. It's the, uh, it's the, it's the forever, the forever, every one of them is. Yeah. Well, yeah, it never ends. Yep. Never ends, you know. And, and and I don't mean that badly because some people are from that area. Some people are from Florida. You know, I picked this place way out here in Texas, which is uh, a hell of a long way further than Dallas because you got direct flights from Dallas to everywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. But I picked this place to live, and uh, I want to continue to live here, and that's what I did, you know, as I'm... I just couldn't make the move. You know, if I would have ever made the move to New York, it would have been a wonderful thing for me to do, but I just couldn't make it up there. Hey, um, you know, I didn't fit. Terry, where are your kids? Uh, one of my daughters is uh, a flight attendant for Southwest Airlines. Okay, I knew that. And has, and has been for many, many years. And uh, the other one is an RN and... Uh, I don't know. She's qualified to do about everything that there is, except operate. And, uh, she's in Phoenix. Oh, that's great, man! Congratulations. And, uh, are they married? Both of them. Both of them are doing good. Both of them are married. Both of them are divorced. Yeah. Don't get any ideas, Rick Flair. <laughs> oh no! Listen, I know how much money you got, and I I, I know your daughters since they were little tiny girls. So. Oh, they're great kids. I know Just the. Great uh, kids. Um, I'm being silly. You no, know no, that. no, no. But I, I saw them both. They both came to your induction, remember? And yeah. I, well, I saw them yeah. in Houston. We had a great time. That was like, yeah. so it's almost like old homeway catching up with those guys, you know? Oh, all, all of the, you know, it's, it's, it is. It's, uh, appreciate you asking about them. I really oh, do. Oh, no. God, I love them. The desk, Jesus. Um, I remember the one time I, I thought you were gonna have to, you were gonna kill Scott Steiner because he asked out one of your daughters. Wow! And I told Steiner I said well, that ain't a good idea. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He that's said, "What do you right. mean?" I said, "I would not ask out Terry Funk's daughter. That ain't gonna work, brother." Yeah, you're sneaking around behind my back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I gave him some heads up though. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. Not not a chance, buddy. <laughs> Oh, he God. was a good boy, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. You're listening to Woo Nation right here on Play.it. Our guest, of course, Terry Funk. And, of course, Rick and Terry had a really famous feud in 1989. And it kind of got kicked off right at the end of the Ricky Steamboat feud there in Nashville. Uh, of course, longtime fans remember Terry Funk was a ringside judge for that. Uh, he was coming back from Hollywood and decided to throw his hat back in the wrestling ring. And then the pile driver spot that you guys kind of alluded to earlier where there was a brawl. And then the, uh, the pile driver threw the table 
What was the deal on that? Did you guys talk about that before no. at all? No. No talk of that at all. No. Oh, I knew he was going to punch no. me. I knew that, but I thought that he was knew. the extent of it. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah. You were just going to no punch me and beat me up in the ring. The table. <laughs> you know, I didn't have any idea we were going through the table either. <laughs> I know he didn't. But <laughs> either did my neck or head. <laughs> Your neck or head didn't either. No, I know it. They, they would have stopped at the table and they wouldn't have made it all the way to the cement floor. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. God almighty. That was bad. Yeah, you just invented <laughs> stuff, man. You were way ahead of your time. Even Tommy Dreamer to this day said that's what invented hardcore wrestling. Yeah. And then our, our, our I Quit match, man. I don't know how people think you that's a great like, match. I love it. You don't like that one? I think me and Terry had a lot better ones 10 years before that. But I, They're not on tape, though. Oh, we had some great ones, you know, but they remember that I Quit one. I know, man. They, and people play that. I, when yeah. I do autograph sessions, Terry, the two things that come up in my career more than anything else is Albany, the I Quit With You, right, and the 92 Royal Rumble. Really? With me, when, yeah. I, when I won the belt uh, in the Rumble, right. uh, after uh, Hurt and I fell out and I left, you know. But those two, pe- those two things are, are people remember the most about my career. The I Quit with Terry Funk and the Royal Rumble. I'd have to You think- know, they mention that to me all the time to this day, even. Oh, you yeah. Know? It's I just-, just something about it, you know, because it was I Quit, you know, I mean... All it was was all you did is say I quit. You know, it wasn't I quit the 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 world. I quit anything. It was just I quit. Yeah. You know, I mean, what's the difference between I quit and I give up? Nothing. No, no, no. I know, but I'm what I'm saying the significance of it is I know. As, as you and I, the, you and that's I. That's the had... amazing thing about it, though, that made it. You know, it was just it was the promos that we did get in there, Rick. Yes, yeah. sir. That's what it was, and yeah. that's. It, it, uh, yes, it was. It was, uh, it was a memorable night in wrestling and probably will be for many more years. Oh, my God, Terry. I'm but, telling you, I hear about it all the time. It's one of my favorite yeah. matches. And one of the things I remember is you guys did the plastic bag over the head. I know there was a little bit of falling out behind the scenes oh on that. Oh, my God. Why in the hell did they, you know, it was like... You well, they know, went crazy. I mean, Rick and I did not just go ahead and say, we're going to go ahead and grab a, a plastic bag. and do, I don't know, or did we, Rick? No, no, you told me, but we didn't tell anybody else. You know, I didn't give a yeah, shit. That, 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 I'm, just glad, I'm just glad you told me. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, we, both, was, we both almost got fired. <laughs> it, was, it was the hottest thing that ever happened, Jeez. and they just stopped it. It was I, over. Uh, it no. would have drawn so much money, it wouldn't even... It they, was they stopped it, not Rick me. And I could just go ahead and go in a six-man or go in an eight-man or go no. in a 12-man or be in a battle royal together. It wouldn't matter. It would sell out after that. Well, well, when, when, it was, was that hot. When, when it was, was that so thing, hot. What would, when was that thing with me and uh, Sting against you and Muda? When, was that before or after the I quit? Uh, I think it. I, I think it was after. I'm was not after, sure. Yeah. In that big cage, yeah, because yeah, the no, the net, I didn't get mad about the paper or the plastic bag. I thought, I thought the uh, corporate, the office, the office got, got mad as hell. But they thought it. me and Terry were trying to. So what's that look like? You guys come Kill back through the, the curtain, and what happens when you come back through the curtain? Who lays into you and kind of rips you a new one for the bag deal? Uh, no one did that night, if I remember correctly. It happened the next day. Because that night, I remember Kevin Sullivan was in a huge disagreement with uh, his wife, and I was kind of taking care of them. And you know, it was always something going on in the business. And, sure. Uh, <laughs> I don't. And, and me and Terry had been to the bar, and uh, you know, even back then, right? Terry, right. Terry and I are going to have a beer together. <laughs> Who gives a shit, right? Right. Um, and then that thing happened with Kevin. I don't know what. I, I, I remember we, we got the TV, and they were furious at us. I don't think anybody yeah. said anything that night. It happened the next day back back in Atlanta. But back in what those was, days, uh, we didn't try to fool anybody. No, I don't know. And what. somehow it got out that we were we were trying to do all of that stuff ourselves, and it wasn't right. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, uh, what what happened is it just uh, and we to be very serious with you, and this is. It's not bragging, but it's what happened. Is uh, through the promos and everything else. I think that we suspended disbelief. 
No, I agree with that. I think that uh, in that match itself, the way it went and everything, I think that uh, I think that uh, we hit the money button, you know, and uh, and uh, the money might, uh, you know, that's whenever you suspend everybody's uh, disbelief in mm-hmm. the profession. Yeah, I know. They, you know, and uh, they're lucky they didn't they let us became, get. They became believers there right then, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're lucky they didn't let, let us get any uh, color. <laughs> we would have really sunk yeah. the ship. <laughs> oh shit! We would have made if they would have gone with that yeah. thing. They would have been. You you might have had. Uh, you might have had that office still here. Can I ask you a question, which I've been dying to ask you for years, and now I just want you to tell me the truth. Yeah. Do you really think I have a big nose, or do you just have to say that all the time <laughs> in your promos? I love I love saying it. I love saying it. Give me, give me the line one time. I haven't heard it in a while. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but the one thing I know is every fan out there said that goddamn player doesn't like that shit. <laughs> he is a pissed off son of a bitch, and he's you ready to fight. Big nose, got banana nose, yeah, yeah. banana nose. <laughs> I don't know, but he didn't. Yeah, but uh, by God, he didn't like that shit. They were they, they, that went ahead. That's what you know. I truly believe that simple things can suspend the fans' disbelief. Yeah. And whenever they heard that, they thought, that some bitch, he don't like that shit. That's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's over with. Now, well, you I mean, made me go look. I, I started looking in the mirror myself in a different way. I well, should have you ever looked at my nose? I guess you got <laughs> I don't have. Yeah, a, but you were uh, never I, a pretty boy. I mean, let's get let's get serious, okay? I was never a pretty boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was too. <laughs> you were wearing chaps and a vest boy. and a cowboy I hat, okay? I was. What the hell? <laughs> now you're telling me I'm not a pretty boy? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> So, Jerry, we talked about you going to Japan and doing some of the hardcore stuff earlier. It, it, when you guys kind of went over in 95 and did that IWA King of the Death tournament stuff with Mick Foley, how does that pitch go? Does somebody from IWA call and say, and then we're going to set you on fire, and then we're going to throw you into an explosive, and then we're going to throw you into barbed wire? I can get well, the barbed no, wire. It's, just a, it, it's a matter of, uh, honestly and seriously, it's a matter of... Uh, what in the hell can uh, I do to go ahead and ensure myself without television, uh, just with uh, uh, the paper at the time and the magazines, what can we do to go ahead and uh, make sure that we can continue on existing and making the money that we are? And it was necessary to go that route over there at that time because... Uh, Anything less wouldn't have made it. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, absolutely. I, I was just curious because I know that, you know, Barbar obviously had been around in the United States for a long time, but that was really the first time anybody over here, of course, through tape trading at the time, saw well, it's, explosions. Well, uh, barbed wire, it was uh, quite a barbed wire fence, you know, and it was uh, quite extreme. But, uh, again, you got to remember is, uh, you know, if... Uh, you know, what What does the fan want to see? And I'm not trying to be nuts or anything, but does the fan want to see Antonio Anoki put his figure four leg lock on somebody for the 1,500th time? Or do they want to see Terry Funk stick a pitchfork up some guy's ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, so which I think would you, you want to do? You know, I mean, which would you want to go spend your money on? <laughs> you know, and I and I don't mean that badly either. And it's it's kind of a goofy ass comparison, but it does say a lot. You know, <laughs> it does say a lot too, because we were without TV. Right. So all we had was uh, a photographer's camera to to reach the media. You and know, the, and the magazines in Japan were weekly at the time, and that was a big deal in the business, right? Uh, they were they were very important, and 
you know, like I said, is uh, they had to look at uh, Antonio Anoki's picture one more time with a figure four leg lock, which had been seen on the cover for 200 times, or do they want to put us on the cover with a pitchfork up a guy's tail end? And uh, which, which to you would sell the most magazines? No, yeah, it certainly uh, you know set the tape. But I mean, you know, whether it was, you know, but at least, at least, you know, as we had a uh, a bit more of an existence, and you know, as that uh, was a bit more of a good existence at a high rate of pay without uh, dealing with the guy from the north. Yeah, and I don't dislike the guy from the north. I like him. You're talking, about, I want you to know you're talking about talking about events, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Well, though that they they just now are starting to get back into that market again. It's funny because um, they're in, they're in, they're stepping into it pretty fast. Yeah, they're they're going to be there in July, but it, they for a while they lost TV. Their TV over there is so damn expensive. Now, now we're back yeah. on, and of course they, they have the, the they can access the network as well. They've got a Fourth of July special. Uh, that they're going to do you know, from Japan. That'll be pretty cool. Yeah. I don't mean this bad because I love the guys that are over there and I love their business and everything else. But it's uh, it lacks a great deal now in comparison to what it was. And uh, Are you talking about I the Japanese that, side or American side, Terry? The Japanese side. Yeah, of course, yeah. And uh, it's... Uh, Lacks a great deal, and I think that uh, I think that he'll go into that country and do quite well. Yeah, we and well, uh, oh, absolutely, I I think so, and that uh, it just doesn't have the the punch that it did before the national television. You know, they were the national television. Oh, they're the first ones to have national television was Japan. I mean, we had it years and years and years ago, but for it to really have the national TV, you know, is that's why we were going over there. Yeah, is because they had the national TV and it was very successful. Terry, let me ask you a question. I've never been asked him by this myself, and since we're talking about this in depth, and then we'll let you go. I know you got stuff to do, but what what caused the breakup between Enoki and Baba? Gosh, that was a, a long time ago. What caused the breakup is that uh, uh, Anoki, first of all, he stayed with Japan Pro. Yeah. And Baba pulled away to all Japan. Oh, Baba pulled away. I thought Anoki pulled away to do New Japan. Uh, you might be right on that. That's a shame that I can't even remember no, that. No, that's okay. I'm just saying call. because it, it really... Well, what it did do is it created a lot of work for the uh, for the guys, for us. You know, I mean, not I, I didn't know uh, that for much. For the American wrestler, it was the best thing it ever happened. I mean, Brody and Hanson, God only knows how much money those guys made over there. Jesus Christ. I mean. Yeah, I, they made a lot of money. Yeah, they did. I mean, and there's, yeah. two, hey, there's two more guys in the Hall of Fame. It's names that sound, keep popping out of my mouth. Give me a break. Boy. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell yeah, you something I, that, uh, going back to Dick Slater, I know I was with you watching it one night. It was uh, Tenru and Slater against uh, Hanson and Brody, and uh, you said to me, "This will be good." And I and I I knew how tough Slater was, right? But brother, did Slater, <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> and, I, and all the respect in the world to Stan and Bruce or Brody, man, because I you know love them both. But they didn't they didn't screw around with Slater. <laughs> oh no, they didn't. Nobody they did. did. Dick Slater was a tough son of a gun. Yeah, he was, and everybody you know? knew him, man. He had a dynamite, yeah. tr he had a, a lightning trigger and a punch. What but, was that uh, one guy that was all pro for? Uh, Matusak. 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 <laughs> yeah, the Matusak, Oakland Raiders. Yeah. Clearwater Dick Beach. Chased his ass right down the beach. Yeah, go ahead. And he, and then, he, then he made him stay in a room and told him you had to write a letter apologizing to him and slide it under the door. He was afraid to come out of his hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> Slater was 19 years old. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a what a what a wonderful what a wonderful guy he was to be around, and what a wonderful guy he was to work with in the ring. You know that, right? Yeah, and he, he was, was just, easy too. You know, Slater's one of those oh. guys. He, he wasn't looking for it. You know, 
But he, if it came his way, man, God, good luck. Jesus Christ, That's remember, exactly we knocked, right. remember when he knocked out Bobby Jr., his partner, in Orlando. You remember that? Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, Holy yes, Christ. yes. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful, so I use the Game Time app. It's the fast and easy way to buy tickets to everything you might want. Yes, wrestling, but sports, music, comedy, man, even theater near you. They've got killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. Man, you just can't beat that. So stop stressing over the tickets. Start getting hyped for all the fun you're going to have. What I like best about the Game Time app experience, at least from my perspective, is it's easy to find and buy tickets. But here's my favorite part of that. I don't have to guess what my seat view is going to look like. They show you images of what your seat view is going to be like. That means no surprises. But you know me, I'm always uh, paying attention to the money. They offer a lowest price guarantee. They even have event cancellation protection, even job loss protection. Talk about peace of mind. Let me explain. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has the tickets that you need even up until the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, everything. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. Now check this out. This is a guarantee you won't see everywhere. If you find the tickets in the same section and the same row for less money, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. That's peace of mind. My favorite piece though, again, I want to say again, you get images of your seats before you buy. So you know exactly what to expect before you arrive. And by the way, you can buy these tickets in a matter of seconds. Seriously, two taps and you're all set. The tickets will be sent straight to your phone. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Just download the game time app, create an account and use the code flare for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code FLAIR for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. He stuck yes. a punch, he flicked a punch Orton, Orton Jr. Wow. and but, but broke his jaw. <laughs> God. I don't know what, but you never saw that side of Dick. He was easy he, going. Uh, you know, and, and, and the son of a gun never lost, did he? Nope. Not that I no, know. No, he didn't lose a nose. No. No, I don't remember him no. ever. Even you can talk to Harley about it. I mean, I, I think Slater was be, will always be considered one of the one of the legitimately really tough guys, and, and with no amateur wrestling background, just a tough guy. Right. Just and, tough guy. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. He just, uh, yeah. 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 And uh, and he smoked all day long and never got tired. He's like Jack Briscoe. He in Harley. Yeah. He smoked all the time and and and. Uh, Slater could get in the ring and do an hour without even thinking about it. The I mean, Briscoe one surprises me. You'd, you'd sit there in a dressing room and watch Briscoe. Jack Briscoe go ahead and uh, do jumping jacks with a cigarette in his mouth. I know. I know. It's the funniest <laughs> thing of all time. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Terry, yeah. before we let you get out of here, before we let you get out of here, Dusty Rhodes is still all in our hearts and minds. You were probably his most uh, uh, famous or infamous, rather, opponent in the Florida Territory. Kind of share with us some of your favorite Dusty stories before we let you go, please, sir. Oh, gosh, just, you know, again, as I hate to go back to this one, but I'm going back to it. But, I mean, you know, I mean, just to show you, uh, the, the greatest story of Dusty is just from where he came from to where he finally ended. And uh, Dusty... Uh, Whenever he was at West Texas, he was actually pumping gas at my father-in-law's gas station, my father-in-law's gas station. And uh, he did. He came up to me and he said, and I drove into there in a, in a 1965 Maroon Ford Galaxy 500 and that had a black roof on it, Maroon. And I pulled into there because I just got the thing. And I was going to Hereford, Texas or somewhere for a $25 payoff and pulled in there to get gas. And uh, Dusty was pumping gas. And he said, hey, Terry, that's the most pretty car that I've ever seen. He said, I said, well, maybe someday you might be able to get one like that. He said, boy, I sure love that. He said, that'd be super. You know, and, uh, and 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 he really meant it. 
He really meant it. He meant every word he said. <laughs> and I and I was there, and you know. But I mean, he he from he was there. I truly believe at that gas station pumping gas because he knew that that was my father-in-law's gas station. Wow. I think that some of the guys knew that I played ball at West Texas, and that's why they came there to play ball. I don't think that they, uh, you know, we came there and they, they uh, uh, saw that uh, we were wrestling. I think they knew it ahead of time. I think it was... Uh, Probably very good for recruiting that we were there, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, guys, it was less legendary. The guys, because a lot of people they wanted. Uh, they wanted. I, I think they at that time knew they wanted to wrestle. Right. Yeah, and what I, what I was just saying, and I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, was I, a lot of people they don't realize how many people that came out of the funk system. Yeah, out of West Texas, but I mean through the Funk family, right? And played football at West yeah, Texas. Yeah, I mean, I know one of the greatest stories, and I wasn't—I never got to meet uh, uh, Terry's father. Um, but um, they, uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys used to get drunk, and your dad wanted, was like Vern Gagne. You always wanted to wrestle, right? Yeah. And you guys just ate a big, like 500 pounds of turkey, and your dad was out there wrestling had a heart attack, right? Wrestling one of the boys. Uh, that's right. Uh, he was wrestling Les Thornton, and uh, yeah. what it was was uh, Les Thornton said uh, uh, exactly what he said. He said nobody can put me in a front face lock and keep me there. Uh, Les Thornton, uh, all people. Well, that was you know, I mean, that was that was somewhat of a challenge. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Here they went and they hit the floor, you know. And I've seen Larry Henning, I've seen Harley Race, I've seen my father, I've seen Bob Geigel, I've seen Mike DiBiase, I've seen uh, Vern Gagne, I've seen Pat O'Connor, all on the either the floor or the mat of my our house. Yeah. We had a mat in the garage too, you know, and I've seen them all. And uh, they were there, and uh, yeah, so my father was there, and uh, he went ahead and said to Les, he says that, uh, you know, as I think I can keep you in a front face lock. So Les went ahead and got down on the floor, and then my father hooked the front face lock on him, but he just scooted it on over into a chokehold, you know, and choked him out, just a frontal choke, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, Whenever he choked him out, is he went ahead, you know. But I mean, they went all over the kitchen, you know. I mean, it was uh, it was no simple matter. I mean, uh, Les was busting his ass to get away, you know. Mm -hmm. And my father choked him out, and he went ahead and uh, sat back up on the bench where I was sitting there watching, you know. And he said, "It wasn't bad for an old man, was it?" I said, "No, it damn sure wasn't." And then he went ahead and he went outside at the front door, and my wife was outside the front door on the front porch. And he says, uh, go tell Terry to come out here. He said, I think I'm having a heart attack. And she came in there and got me, and I went ahead and went out and got him in a car, drove him to a little town called Canyon, uh, some country doctor, and don't mean that bad, but didn't have the facilities or anything else, but he had him there for about three or four hours. We were only 18 miles from Amarillo, and he says, Dory, I think you've had a massive heart attack, but, you know, we're going to get you to Amarillo. Well, hell, we could have been in Amarillo and had him under whatever. Whether that would have made a difference, I don't know. But we had to wait for the ambulance to get there, and then they took him to Amarillo at 65 or 75 miles an hour, and he died on the way. But uh, How old was he, Terry? Could you have done anything with it? I'm not sure you could. Do I ever hold anybody against, you know, hold anything against anybody? Not really. Is But uh, I love my dad, and it was... Uh, on the way, he says, uh, Terry, he says, how far do we got to go? I said, about three or four miles, Dad. And that was the truth. And he said to me, he says, 
Aunt Mikey says, I'm going. And that was his last word. Oh, man. You know. Wow. But, uh... How old was he, Terry? 54, and I thought he lived a good life. And here I am as a 70, still kicking ass. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm 66, man. I'm right there with you, buddy. How could right, I be 60? Yeah. How could I be 66? How can you lie years? about your age like that to me right here on this, on the telephone and everything when you're talking to me? I know, <laughs> I know for a fact you're only 57. 57? You're right. Six. Uh, see, I told you. I wish I, I was 57. Why you continue to lie about your age? I, well, I, you know what? I've, no one's told me I'm 57 in a long time. And I don't like anybody telling <laughs> me I'm... Since you was 52. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you, what did you say? <laughs> Nobody's told you look 57 since you were 52. <laughs> yeah, I hate people saying you look good for your age. I'd rather shoot somebody for saying that. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. God, you look good for your age. What does that mean, me you too, dumbass? Yeah. Yeah, I looked in that mirror. <laughs> hey, listen, go enjoy your afternoon, and thank you so much, buddy. All right, love you guys. Happy early birthday, sir. Thank you for the time. What day is his birthday? All right. A week from today. Right. A week Rick from today, I'll be calling your, you, man. Rick Flair, you get your butt up here to Amarillo, Texas, and come and see me. Well, if you still had that ranch in Canyon where I could, my girlfriend could ride a horse or something, she's just not going to hang out at Whiskey River all day with you and Vicky. No, I've got a, I'm, I live on a lake now, but it's just a lake. That's Do you have a boat? Is, huh? Do you have a boat? No, no, I don't have a boat. Well, buy a boat and I'll come out there. <laughs> well, my daughter's got this great big, her, <laughs> you know, she's got this great big, huge boat. Okay. <laughs> I she love does, you, man. She's got, a big, she's got a big ass boat. She does. Who does? My daughter. Oh, cool, but she's in Phoenix, she's right? I don't, I don't need a boat. <laughs> she's got a big-ass boat. I got a dock here. I got a boathouse here. I got all of that shit. Well, there you go, man. Well, I'm going to come see you, I promise. Thank you so much for this, Terry. Okay, you got to take care. Give my, give my hey, best uh, to the boss. Same Vic way here, or else I wouldn't be here with you, Rick. Okay, buddy. Thank you. Hey, say hi uh, to Vicky. Take care. Love you, man. Can't wait to see you again. Me too, buddy. Love thank you. you. Love your family. Love you too, buddy. Right, you take care. Okay, thank you, Terry. All right, bye. All the ladies love Slick Rick. You know they love Woo Nation. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. This is Conrad Thompson with Woo Nation right here on Play.it. Baseball's in full swing, and you can be a part of all the action all season long at DraftKings.com, the official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. There is only one Ric Flair, 16-time world champion, but don't get down. Don't despair. You can win cash every single day at DraftKings. No season-long commitments, win huge prizes every day. Peter from Colorado won a million bucks in just one day. Are you kidding me? Hey, Pete, when you come to Atlanta, drinks are on you, pal. Woo! New contests start daily, so hurry to DraftKings.com right now and use promo code FLAIR to play for free in today's $10,000 fantasy baseball contest. DraftKings.com, official partner of Major League Baseball. Enter Flair for free entry now at DraftKings.com. 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 Woo! The greatest talker in the history of the business is behind the mic once again. Woo! This Woo! is Woo Nation with Ric Flair. One of the greatest of all time, Terry Fong. More than one of the greatest, the most entertaining guy. I mean, it's it's I, it's hard to describe. You know, where Dusty was entertaining in in, in so many aspects. Right. Uh, Terry Funk was just he was just he was a rubble without a cause. You could hear by talking to him. I mean, you know, for all the stuff that I think I've done in the business, I never lit myself on fire. I have done the barbed wire. Yeah. There is nothing that Terry hasn't done. You heard what he said. He's got four heart stints. 18 inches of intestine are plastic. Two new two, knees. Two new, new replacements. Yeah. A new elbow. <laughs> Jesus. He's the $6 million man. Easy. <laughs> and, he's, and he's laughing about it. Yeah. I love it. He's and what's cool is, you know, he's still getting around pretty good. I just saw him yeah, call him rally last yeah, month he, with his he, wife. And he's getting along better than, uh, than, than Harley. Harley's in a wheelchair. Right. Did I tell you that? With, yeah. 
with uh, I saw him at WrestleMania last year. Yeah, or is that, well, no, but he said he was got out of the hospital the day that Dusty died. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and he but then he can't he can't feel anything from the knees down. Oh, you told me that. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. So. What's well, cool, too, is, you know, Dusty, or we talked a few episodes ago with Ricky Steamboat that, you mm-hmm. know, if it would have been a thing, he would have been doing moonsaults like Shawn Michaels. Mm-hmm. And then in his late 40s, you know, there he's doing moonsaults. I know. I know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Just stuff that nobody could imagine. And, you know, I hate to say it, but that's one of the reasons his body is, is taking a few nicks now. He did yeah. more than moonsaults. Oh, yeah. Jump on anything. He didn't care. He, this is a good Terry Funk story. He's over at the house with me a few years ago, and he saw that I had the um, barbed wire match with him and Sabu from the ECW mm-hmm. arena in Philadelphia. He said he'd never seen it. Yeah. So I said, well, hey, we'll put it in. So we put it in, and he's sitting watching, and at one point in the match, he's wrapped completely in barbed wire, and he looks at me, and he says... I'm somebody's grandpa. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just thought that was the greatest thing ever to imagine watching, you know, your grandfather yeah, yeah. on TV wrapping himself in barbed wire. That's yeah. Terry Funk. Well, I'm glad also to know that he thinks I need Wendy to count my money. Otherwise, that <laughs> I guess I'm stuck with you for a while. <laughs> See, man. Great Until episode. next week, brother. Let's do it. Woo, nation. Fight Plus is the ultimate digital platform for live sports and entertainment, and they're now offering a free seven-day trial at TryFight.com. Fight Plus is packed with a premium live event schedule, over a thousand hours of live action every year, and a library of more than four thousand hours on demand, plus exclusive content you can't get anywhere else. Fight is a great partner of ours; they support us, so let's support them. Give that free seven-day trial a shot, and you'll be a member for life. That's tryfight.com. T R Y F I T E dot com. Woo! Woo! Wings. Now open for delivery from Uber Eats and Postmates in these fine cities. Delicious anytime and the perfect meal tonight while you're watching wrestling. Woo! Wings. Legendary flavors, world championship wings. Woo! For a full list of locations, visit Ric Flair Wings. Woo.com. Join in right in the action. Ric Flair Woo Wings. Amazing. Somebody read me some more. More Woo Wings. Woo! Hey guys, Eric Bischoff here, and just want to call a quick timeout. I want to tell your listeners about what I've been telling everybody at over at 83 weeks, quite a while now, about all the cool things that are happening over at adfreeshows.com. An all-new edition of The Insiders is here, as Conrad welcomes David Zaudi, the man behind so many iconic video packages WWF fans grew up on, including one that left Vince in tears. You got it. And Conrad, I swear, I walked outside the studio, and Vince was sitting down on the concrete floor, crying hysterically, just saying thank you. Thank wow. you. Thank you. I went up to the whole cab and he says, good job. Can't wait to see it. 15 minutes later in the stairwell, Vince is still sitting down in a different spot now, crying, saying thank you. Thank you. Jim Johnston created the soundtrack for generations of WWE fans with some of the most iconic themes in history. Jim sits down with Conrad to take us behind some of those classic themes, including The Ultimate Warrior. And then I recorded that. And then just over that, he was just doing... You know, it's so simple, but that's what felt like him. That's just a small taste of what we've got waiting for you with four levels to choose from. See for yourself why ad-free shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adfreeshows.com.